it has been buried for thousands of years. A mystery, a secret. Now the most amazing discovery of our time is about to become the most extraordinary adventure of all time. Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode here on the Cosmic Multiplayer server. And uh, today's episode we are going to be building our mini game. And if we turn around here, you'll see that I've already started building the support structures ready for us to start building our game because we require quite a lot of space inside. Let's have a little look inside and I'll show you the volume of the space that we need for the uh, the redstone that I've designed for this mini game. And uh, we have an absolutely huge space to fill and um it's all highly complicated redstone. Now, I'm not going to actually show you the redstone that's actually going to be involved. Uh, we're just going to go pretty much into a time lapse of building it. So let's get started on our Stargate minigame. <laughs>
Stargate is finally constructed. So let's go and have a look at this first. Um, so you can see here on the surface we have uh, it's sort of like a um, you know some sort of like lost civilization world. You know we can see the ruins of whatever might have been ancient uh, ancient structures might have been here. Got uh, you know some pillars. Oh, I'm getting hurt there as well. <laughs> um, and what we're going to do now though is uh, well actually we'll have a closer look here at the Stargate. And you can see here, I can step through here, very sort of cut off on the end here because we're, I was worried we were going to run into uh, Jerk Rat's, uh, it is his isn't it? Oh no, no, it's been, it's been unclaimed now, I'm sure he had his head on that one there. Um, almost into his uh, into his plot nearly. Uh, but let's, uh, before we actually fire this up, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to show you the redstone. And because of course I didn't remember which one of these it was, hang on, might as well have something to eat. I'm going to quickly show you the redstone for this here because this is one of the more elaborate structures that I've made because it needs to have the ability to reset and the ability to uh, have protection as it goes along through the different stages. So you see here we have uh, very similar to the uh, the door that we have in our hidden library. Um, this here is where as well as well all the uh, the diamonds or anything else people might chuck through will go, and this just sorts out. So uh, what we have here is a little sorter for the diamonds. So they come through here, and if someone puts a diamond through, it will trigger this line. If someone puts anything else through, it just gets dumped into here, so that uh, if they do put anything else through that's not supposed to be in here, uh, they lose it. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so that comes along here, and this is where the first probability is. Here we have a 50% probability, because we have one non-stackable item and one stackable item. And that gives the 50% probability of triggering the next line which uh, comes across here and this is one of our multi-stage uh, like relay switches that we used in our um, automatic uh, player minecart system you can see that tutorial there because that's uh, actually we're going to do more of that episode shortly actually because uh, i'm hoping to build that rail network here soon once I finish mapping it all out. But anyway, that is uh, our multi-stage switch so that it can keep the lines active through the different stages without uh, the uh, system resetting prematurely. And uh, what we have here is then from that there goes up to this gate here at the top here. Now both of these lines have to be active for the Stargate to activate and for you to win a prize. So in order to get that, first of all you have the uh, this here which then charges the gate and that will fill its capacitors as we're going to call it, but I'll show you that on the surface in a moment. Uh, and that will, uh, as it sort of like puts on a little, almost like a little theatrical display as if you're, as if you're on a Stargate world. Uh, but anyway, that um, triggers that which then charges that first line in that circuit. And then the next part is from the DHD or the dial home device to all the Stargate fans out there. You dial the gate up there and then when you press the red button that comes along this channel and I should have brought some scaffolding with us. <laughs> 
I hop up there, this is how we get our 66% uh, chance of triggering the uh, actual Stargate. So you, the odds are quite in your favour, really, uh, of, uh, of getting some prizes. So what we have here is two non-stackable items and uh, one stackable item. And of course they will give the uh, the necessary signal strength to uh, to trigger the next stage. Uh, if you want to have a look at the uh, the actual randomizer as well, I did a recent episode on the Bedrock series. Uh, but that then of course as well goes into this gate. And this gate as well is also taking a signal off whether or not the capacitor's charged on the gate. Um, so that you can't just uh, click on the uh, on the button. Uh, and get prizes out. It has to actually have, you have to actually go through all the stages. Uh, but once that happens, it passes through all these various timers. Now these are our variable pulse extenders and these have different lengths of time uh, to do uh, different operations. So you see we've got one up here. I, I can't, uh, oh I can't, that one there. So that one there that has to transfer one stack. Um, there's one up here for how long the Stargate stays active. Uh, the one underneath here is for the reset system. So this one here uh, allows the system to, it, it stays active until the Stargate disengages and it uh, does the final reset just as the last bit of water drains away from the Stargate. Uh, and you can see here as well on this green chain that goes up to a, uh, a, a redstone light. If that light is active, that means that um, that the the system has reset so every time you press so even if you press that red button the system will then go into reset mode uh, and you have to wait till that light comes on solid before you can play again but uh this is definitely a really cool redstone structure that i've uh, built I've, I've really enjoyed the process of, of making this it took uh, quite a long time to get all the redstone in place uh, i've also added uh, in addition to what i had in my test world this other little uh little one here for uh we have a little uh hop the clock here which is um at the minute that's locked because this is not powered um if the stargate activates uh this line here becomes charged uh, and that's only to, to, for the capacitors that is um it sends a signal down here which is going to cause that light to flash to show you what progression you have in the game uh, and that's just simply done by the hopper here and we have an observer uh, observing that and that also makes this uh, note block pulsate so it just creates a nice little low, a low sound underneath. Uh, but let's anyway, let's head up to the surface and we'll actually play this game. Uh, actually, no, <laughs> I should really show you the prizes before we continue. I still haven't finished loading up all the prizes. Uh, I still have two chests here because I'm uh, trying to load them in a very particular fashion because I have, uh, yeah, this one here. You'll see here we have multiple chests. However, I have to take into consideration the way that these chests will drain. So you see here, we've got some uh, bits of bobs here that go into this dispenser and it will randomly choose two to four items. This line here, uh, actually I should show you here, this is how we determine whether or not you're going to get two items or four items from, uh, from one of these. So you see here, you may get just some uh, um, there is a couple of junk items in there, you know, some cobblestone, there's some Abydos sand. Uh, because it's Stargate, we have the gold symbiotes. Uh, what have we got in here? We have uh, x 2 hull plating, uh, snow from Hoff. Uh, and there's lots of d different books in here as well. Uh, I basically emptied my entire store of books. Uh, I kept the, uh, I was only, uh, wanted the, I had like three chests of them. I already wanted the Frostwalker books. Uh, so the rest of them is all up for prizes. Uh, but I've had to uh, very carefully arrange them because this here is going to be the priority slot, which means that this here, uh, this one here has its priority slot. So when I load them, I'm making sure that they are not just like a whole line of the uh, of the not so good items that are queued up. Uh, there will be uh, lots of other ones, but it, uh, it takes time to organize uh, those to make sure that uh, it's a good mixture of uh, items that are gonna pass through the randomizer. So let's hop up here now and we will play the game. Now, to play the game, I have left a destruction book. Now, yes, it is 17 pages long, and if you want to read the whole thing, uh, you can pause it. Uh, but basically, it's telling the story of you're going to play the Stargate game, and it's a probability game. But one thing I will say is make sure that every time you play, that the uh, before you start, the lamp is solid. If the light hasn't returned to solid, and you start throwing diamonds in and pressing buttons, you are not going to win anything, and you're losing your chance to win and your, uh, and your diamond. So, um, 
how to play. It's uh, very simple. You are on the uh, remote cosmic world and you need to contact the SGC or Stargate Command to get supplies. But unfortunately, the DHD here is broken and you're going to need to replace the control crystal. But uh, luckily for us, the uh, control crystals can uh, be replaced by diamonds. And simply again, there you have the 50% chance of getting it to work. So what you have to do is you have to come behind the DSD and you drop a diamond on here. Uh, and of course, there's like a hopper mine cart under there that sucks it away. So this would be, you know, you going behind the gate to uh, fiddle with the dials. And what we'll see here is the Stargate. You'll see these lights here. If you're successful, these lights will power up, signaling the capacitors are charging, which will, of course, unlock the superconductive rings of the Stargate. Uh, you can tell I've watched far too much Stargate, and of course, we, I recently marathoned uh, all the seasons from uh, you know SG-1, Atlantis, and Stargate Universe. Um, actually, it's quite nice here for doing this at night. Uh, where were we up to in the book there? So, um, let's see, so successfully charged the uh, gate capacitors, and you'll hear the, uh, the sound. Uh, after about 10 seconds, if you hear nothing and the lights obviously don't go, then obviously you've, you've failed and you need to put another diamond in and have another go. Um, and what you've done here is you need to dial an address. Now, dialing address is just a simple case of picking, you know, seven random buttons, you know, just like the Stargate address, you need uh, six points in space and the point of origin, so it's seven buttons, and then the center button, which activates the gate. And if you're successful, the gate will power up, uh, the capacitors will drain into it, and the gate will remain active for about a minute and once it's inactive uh, you will receive your prizes on this step here so let's see what else have we got in here so yep yeah, we got that there and then you have the 66 percent chance of dying in the gate which we've already had a look at and uh yeah, of course, if you fail, the gate will lose its charge and you don't get anything. And then, of course, the wormhole opens for about a minute. And here is the probabilities of getting uh, the extra items. And that's pretty much really all you need to read. The rest of the book is a troubleshooting section, which, of course, tells you um, how to uh, recoup from a, uh, a failure or if uh, something's gone wrong or maybe somebody's left it with the gate charged and hasn't uh, finished playing. And here's the, uh, the state of the light. So the solid light uh, means that it's ready to play, which is what we've got here. Uh, flashing light indicates the capacitors are charged and you should go to the, um, the DHD to enter your address. And if it's off, the game is in reset mode and you simply have to wait for the uh, game to finish resetting and it will go solid like this again. And uh, then it's all ready to play again. And then we have the appendices, uh, because of course, you know, you've, you've got to have an appendices, you know, <laughs> any, any good Lord of the Rings fans got to add those in. Um, and this is just explained some of the terms, so a Stargate there, so it's giving you a description of what a Stargate is. Because uh, I, I don't know, I mean, some of the other players may not know what Stargate is, they may never have watched the show. Um, so we've got there an explanation of the Stargate, uh, the DHD or dial home device, which of course is this device here, uh, a little explanation of that. Uh, control crystals, a little bit of an explanation of control crystals in the Stargate universe. And then on the next page, our SGC or Stargate Command, which is you know where the, where the Stargate is in the show. And uh, of course, you know this page is uh, intentionally blank, uh, but this page was accidental. Yeah, <laughs> let's just zoom that back to the beginning, and now let's actually play the game. Uh, actually, let's have something to eat first. And let's just see, there's no other players on, so we don't have to worry about any lag from anyone's farms or anything like that. So here we are, we need to get our supplies from the SGC, but we need to signal them first so they can send up our, our things through. So what we're going to do is we're going to come behind the gate and we are going to replace the control crystal. And... Unsuccessful. Okay, let's uh, try putting a new control crystal in. and unsuccessful. I should have maybe rigged this for the tutorial. <laughs> there we go. So you see there that the capacitors have now charged and you can hear that thumping underneath and of course the status indicator light is flashing. So now we just need to dial an address. And dial the gate. Have we been successful? Yes we have. Stargate there has, uh, has charged, the uh, the capacitors are discharging and part of the reset mode you see there has now activated and uh, the Stargate will remain active for about a minute. Let's grab a screenshot of that there. And there you go, the Stargate has closed. 
and we got two prizes for, no four prizes we actually won the full thing that time uh, so what have we got we got some cobblestone we got a nautilus shell and some sand from uh, abydos so that was um in the end turned out to be quite a successful uh, successful uh, trip there and there you go you see there the game has now reset so that we are now ready for the next player should they want to play again or the next player to come along so there you go we got straight through that time so let's uh, dial another address there we go are we gonna win no we failed to dial the correct address so that's probably quite a good to have a few examples and you'll see there the uh, the gates capacitors discharged and then of course we would have to play again but we of course we have to wait as well for the reset system to uh, to reset all of the, uh, the all of the hoppers and all the timers will all get reset uh, that takes just about a minute or so but uh, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed that one there. Um, now that we have the Stargate uh, in this world, it means that we can now have a smooth transition between our two worlds. So uh, what I think we'll do is we will uh, dial the Stargate and we will head on maybe through to one of our other worlds. So okay, let's uh, dial this up and actually head on through the gate this time. So there we go. Dial the address. There we go. And before the gate closes, I'll see you all on the other side. This is not the world I was aiming for. Let's have a little walk out here. Now we've been here before. And here you can see the, the massive server room. Um, yeah, we've uh, we've been to this spot before. This is actually my very first um, Java world. Uh, which I think we may have to have a little bit of an explore in a, a future episode. Um, yeah, these doors could lead anywhere on the server. But I think we need to dial the gate again, uh, and get out of this massive server farm for now, and uh, try and see if we can head back to the correct world this time. So where's that DHD? Let's try this one again. place this time this is our uh, bedrock survival world um, let's go and have a little one downstairs because it's just really nice just to be home for uh, for a little bit even though it is absolutely pouring it down here so here we go uh, downstairs into our base yep and all of our equipment is still here it uh, actually there's any food in there as well yep we'll take some carrots So there we go, we are back home here in our Bedrock Survival world. Uh, you can of course check out my series for uh, all of the uh, the details of our like massive storage systems, our uh, insanely huge kelp farms, all fully automated. Uh, you hear all the different music because every, <laughs> everything's coming in from all the different automatic farms and all coming back to the same space. But uh, anyway, I think we are going to put our feet up here for uh, for a little bit. Uh, so don't forget to uh, rate, comment, favourite and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Oh yeah, and, uh, and don't forget to uh, to ring the bell and to do the, uh, the YouTube dance to uh, get notifications on uh, your videos.